Hi everybody and welcome back to Cheetosh. My name is Chris and today we're going to continue on with Lookout on Parenting here, the survival guide for the single parent by my friend, good friend Ted Moss III. We're going over tips 8 through 11 today and it might sound a little weird. I'm wearing my retainers so I might sound a little, a little off. See, oh, I'm already jumbling up my words. Um, but Let's continue on. Let's just jump right into it, guys. As always, we're going to talk about what we did last time. So last time we went over, oh gosh, what was it? Four through seven? Yeah, tips four through seven. We talked about tip number four being establishing control. And when you establish control, it's important that you have a control key. So what is a control key? A control key, uh, from what Ted describes, is something that commands immediate action, immediate attention, and conveys a negative punishment for not following the rules that have been conveyed in prior converse conversations. So, for example, Ted says that his control key that he likes to use is when he says, right now. And notice I say... I say he says it sternly, kind of directly, forcefully. He's not yelling it. And Ted makes a point here. You don't want your control key to be your volume because how are your kids ever going to take you seriously if you don't yell at them? The whole point here is you want your control key to be something that you use, you know, out when you're in public, out when you're at your friend's house or your parent's house, something that conveys whatever rule set needs to be followed right now and they need immediate attention is needed. And there is consequences if you don't follow it. And I like how Ted opens up this chapter by saying you can expect like chaos until you introduce structure into your toddler's life. How do you do that? You have to establish control. Next, we talk about tolerating anger. So, your your kids are going to get mad at you. And <laughs> that's just something you're going to have to deal with as a parent. And again, you're a parent. You're not their friend. There's going to be a different relationship here. You have to tolerate them getting mad at you. You have to be okay with them saying, I hate you, and then storming off to their room. Right? You have to be okay with that. Maintain your cool. Let them lose theirs eventually the emotions and the energy run out. And they return back to like a normal state. Now, you should tolerate anger, but you, anger, but you should have rules on how they express their anger. So they can't just throw a fit anywhere they please and start throwing things all over the room and cussing up a storm, let's say. Gosh, I, don't, I hope your toddler's not cussing. I don't know. <laughs> I, no, I don't think I was then, but hopefully your toddler's not cussing. But you, you get the point. They can't just be causing a ruckus. Have those rules in place so when you're out in public, they're not going to embarrass you. They're not going to throw a fit and cause a scene. Next, we talked about raising their spirit. You as a parent will be the most formidable formidable force in their life and every once in a while you're going to have to let them win even if potentially you're right in the matter if their convictions are so so strong you can't just be this crushing force all the time you have to kind of let them win to show them hey it's important to stand up for something that i believe in and build up their courage courage. I think this is very important. You can't crush their spirit, raise their spirit. And finally, like I mentioned earlier, being a parent, there's friends and there's parents and your responsibility is going to be different than the ones that their friends have. All right. You're not there to be their friend. You're there to be their parent. And that's a job that you and only you will have. There, many friends are going to come through their lives, but they're only going to have one set of parents. 
All right. So that was last time. We're going to continue forward with tip number eight. Tip number eight. Enjoy each other. Enjoy each other. I think this one is kind of kind of self-explanatory here in that we all have the same 24 hours and we're not here on this earth forever. And especially the, the toddler years are such a very short time frame when you're talking about the span of a human life. So you don't want to waste those moments. Your time with your child is limited. Enjoy those moments. All right? Appreciate those moments because they're fleeting and they're not going to be there forever. And I like what Ted, Ted says here. You know, most parents wait for the big events to spend time with their child. You know, birthdays, holidays, typical big events like that. But you don't wait for those big events. Do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Do it at random moments. Because I'm paraphrasing here what Ted's saying, and I, I think I know what he's getting at here. At those big events, you often end up being an event manager as the parent. And maybe you're, you're hosting the party or you're, you know, you, you're talking to other people at that event too, not just your child. There's way more, many other people involved in this event. So you have to play the role of an event manager possibly, and you end up spending your time doing all kinds of other things and still spending time with your child, but it becomes something that's way more than that. So don't wait for those big events. Wait wait for the Wednesday movie night, random movie night, or the random Thursday where you go out for ice cream and you get to talk about how their day was. Enjoy your time with each other. Don't just wait for the birthdays and the Christmases and the Thanksgivings. And again, uh, your toddlers are not a chore. Hanging out with your toddler should not be a chore. You should not treat it like that. All right. Let's continue kind of building off that, enjoying each other, being in the moment. Being in the moment, what Ted describes here is that you allow your toddler to share their worldview with you and you try to listen to their perspective on things. Here's where you, you want to just, you want to just listen. And you don't want to introduce your own commentary. Don't introduce your own logic let them invite you into their perspective. And, and you can kind of learn something from that on how they see the world or how they see themselves. You know, as adults, and I can fully speak to this, I'm like either thinking about things that already happened and what I can learn from them, or I'm thinking about things in the future, like what I need to do later today or later this week. That's how, like, most of the day is spent thinking. So very little of the time am I thinking about something, like, directly in the present. Yes, like, if I'm working on something, I am thinking about it, like, directly, presently, what's in front of me. But that's kind of my day is spent, okay, what? how did I do this last time? Or what did I do last time and how can I do this differently? And what do I need to do next month? What do I need to do... Uh, tomorrow, what am I doing later today? Your child just thinks about the present. Just thinks about the present. It does not have that kind of like extrapolation. <laughs> Did I say it? Your child does not have that extrapolation and like mental capacity, I guess, to think about things reviewing things in the past or thinking about the future because those things should kind of be provided for by the parent. The parent is kind of the overseer of what you did in the past and what we're doing in the future. So the toddler is just worrying about what they're doing right now, you know, what they're playing with, the environment they're interacting with. They're very 
very, if we're talking about with winning in mind, conscious mind, very, very active. So just let them share what they have learned. Let them share that world view with you. And you might be surprised at what they have figured out all on their own. Next tip we have here. Tip number 10, listen carefully. Listen carefully. So let me actually go to the, because there is a great, Ted has a great story on this. I think it was, yep. So children adapt to what is happening right now. We kind of just mentioned that in the previous tip, right? Everything's about right now in the present. So every once in a while, your child is going to share something with you that, again, building off of what we talked about in the previous tip, is going to share something with you that invites you into their perspective of their reality. Right? They just might be able to teach you something about how you see the world. So Ted has this interesting story, and this kind of explains this tip uh, really well. Is Ted talks about he was playing a game with his daughter when she was about four years old, and he was trying to determine how far she could follow my logic, his logic, and he asked her questions like, what's your mother's youngest sister's pet's name? And she kept on responding with correct answers to these kind of semi-confusing questions you would think for a toddler. And then she kind of asks him, well, can I ask you a question? And he said, I don't think so because you just won't be able to ask me anything I wouldn't know, he says. But they do it anyway. And she asks him, what is God's last name? So in that simple question, you kind of pick up a you pick up on a lot with what your toddler has picked up from being on this earth, from living in this world. Where did they learn that? How did they know what God is? What what brought them to ask that question? And it's a kind of a stumping question. Like how <laughs> How would they know to ask that? But see, if you kind of just shrugged it off like, no, 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 I already know everything, then you wouldn't gain that insight into their world. Right? You wouldn't gain that, how how they view their vision of the world. And as Ted says in here, enjoy the world through their eyes. Because it, it, it's different. And you just might learn something. Next tip and the last tip that we're going to talk about today is tip number 11. Value your relationship. Ted talks here, starts off the chapter saying that your toddler did not have a choice in being born into the parenting situation that they are in. Or the parenting situation that you are in. That you have placed yourself in. In self, you have placed yourself in. There we go. God, these retainers. So do not blame them. That's a typo there. Don't blame them for that situation. And value what they bring into your world. Value that relationship that you have with your toddler. Because again, it's a relationship that's different than friends. It's a relationship that's going to be different than classmates, than teammates. You're a parent. And they're only going to have one set of those. So be proud of the successes they will have. Again, like we talked about before, raise, raise their spirit. Be proud of them when they stand up for things they believe in. Be proud of them when they have these little victories in their life, even though they might seem kind of trivial. And Ted says here, don't just wait for those big moments. Again, like we were talking about previously, don't just wait for the big events. Tell them how much you appreciate them at just those random times. 
I remember there's a movie with Sean Connery called uh, Finding Forrester, and I remember the young man that he's like mentoring in that movie. Oh gosh, he tells him he asks him. The young man asks Sean Connery's character, who I think is Forrester, you know, what's the best gift to get like a girl he likes? And he said, oh, it, a random gift at a random time is are, are the best. So kind of here, yes, everybody can give praise at the big moments, like when you score a goal, when it's, you know, you graduate from elementary school you know and or you get like a you you get an a plus on like a painting you did something like that but what about those random times where you're just both sitting on the couch and you just lean over to your son or daughter and say hey i love you you know that you're a great son or daughter in that little moment where it's just really personal, just you and them, think about how much of an impact that that would have on them. It, I think that would show that you really value their relationship. And I think kids would pick up on that. I do. And this last quote here, this bullet point, the only lasting thing that you will leave to this world is their bodies, their minds, and their ability to pass on the things you have taught them. Think about that. Everything goes back in the box at some point. You know, you're playing this game, you're playing a board game, but eventually the game ends and everything goes back in the box. I remember hearing this from uh, some pastor. I think it was John Orr. Everything goes back in the box. So then what? What does everything you have in this life really mean then, the material things? I don't really think they mean much, but what does mean a lot, what does get left behind is your seed, the children that you have. And then they are able to pass on the things you have taught them. And we'll just wrap up right there, guys. That's a good way to wrap up. Thank you very much for listening. If you made it this far, uh, we're going to have... A new video next week, probably finish out the Teddy's Tips portion of Look Out on Parenting here. And then we're going to move on to part two of the book, which is dealing more with how to get through the day with your toddler. Um, stay tuned. We might have a surprise video series coming out as well very soon. Something kind of out of the blue. Try it. See what happens. And... Thank you guys very much. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down in the section below. Please like and subscribe. We're going to have more and more content coming. My name is Chris. This has been Cheetash. Take care.